Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, there are some people who make headlines. There are some people who uh, make history. And then there are those very few who make both. Now, the lady I'm now going to invite on stage to render the headline address of the conclave is someone who's made both. She leads the worldwide team of J. Walter Thompson, 12,000 employees, 200 offices, 90 countries. She is an active member of advertising industry organizations, such as being on the board of the Ad Council and FE Worldwide. She is also a member of the Great Marketing Group of Great Britain. She's also a member of Women in Advertising and Communications London. She was awarded an OBE by Queen Elizabeth II for her service to tourism as the chairperson of Visit London. Now, I must tell you here that she um, spares a lot of her time and her resources to charity. She is a trustee of uh, Save the Children and the Royal Drawing School of London. I'm going to ask her, how does she wear so many hats? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together and welcome on stage the worldwide CEO of J. Walter Thompson, Tamara Ingram. Very, very warm welcome to you. We're delighted you're here. Take it on. Hello, everybody. Can you hear? Oops. Can you hear me? I'm just going to check that the uh, clicker is uh, working. So um, I'm here to talk about um, the future of creativity. The future of creativity, particularly in the context of AI. And if you ask me the difference between human and machine, I never thought. Certainly not five years ago. I would ever have to think that a machine, something such as AI, could replace what it means to be human in the sense of creativity. And I know we're going to talk about media and where creativity is placed and how AI can help with that. But I think it's, the AI is going to ask us some fundamental questions about what it means to be a human being, what it means in the context of work, what it means in the context of democracy, and importantly in the business that I'm in, in what does it mean in creativity? And even though the first bit of the presentation will talk a little bit about AI, at the end I'm going to give you a point of view about what creativity, what I believe and we believe at J. Walter Thompson Creativity is all about. It's fair to say... Sorry. Forgive me. It's fair to say that at the moment we're standing at the edge of a precipice when it comes to AI and data. I mean, I think it is so interesting that we very, you've cleverly put on this conference, because if you think the amount of information, the power that AI has, it is changing the way that we can teach people, it is changing the way that our media is bought, it is changing the way that actually products are generated. And that, in the end, will change creativity. You may not know that if you actually did the Google search, which I did before I came here, is that there are 4.9 billion searches for creativity and 4.2 billion for AI. I have to say I found that very disappointing given I'm in the creative industry, that AI is becoming almost as important in people's imagination for creativity. Um, what I find uh, quite distressing, though, when you think about AI, is people are very concerned because of the jobs, because of the unforeseen consequences, what actually is going to happen. Is AI a friend? Is it a foe? When we look at Facebook, when we look at what happened in the American election, is social a friend or a foe for creativity? Is the information that AI have a help towards creativity, or is it something that's going to dampen the impact and differentiation? What is it that enables something to create impact? Is AI on our side, or is actually something that's going to have such terrible unforeseen consequences that it's actually going to take over the world? But my contention here today is that there is nothing new in AI at all. In fact, this is a picture of Pythagoras. Uh, and as you know, the Greeks and indeed the Indians and the Chinese for the millennium were very interested in logical thinking, very interested in the mechanics of thinking. And actually, it's only since the uh, advent of the computer that we were able to put all that great thinking together and formulation to create AI. But actually, even in millennial, they believed in golden robots. So none of this is new. 
What is new is the power of what we can do with it, and therefore the power of how we can help it either help us with creativity or take away from creativity. What is it about creativity that enables it to be different from AI, or is AI something that we marketeers should use to aid our creativity? Um, the interesting thing is that I, I like to believe that I'm very good at the Oscars. This is a company called Swarm, by the way, who, who did some extraordinary predictions. First of all, they didn't only predict that um, Trump would get in. They predicted his first 100-day rating. I don't know if anyone remembers the Oscars, but I thought three billboards would win. Because I, I took what I thought was great work and decided that was going to win. And I, you all remember it was the, uh, the water film that won. And, and they predicted that because humans have emotion, and emotions may affect our predictability. In fact, this company even predicted the Kentucky winning. So what is very interesting to me, we like to believe that we have insights. We like to believe those human insights make us better at creativity. And yet, without any emotion, or without any, uh, 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 any of the human elements, a machine can predict something about creativity much greater than any of us. Um, obviously, you all know the extraordinary thing about AI will change medicine forever. First of all, it's enabling us to predict uh, um, uh, cancers. It's enabling us to produce uh, personalized medicine. Uh, it's helping with Alzheimer's. So on one hand, of course, it's extraordinary in the creativity it's enabling us to, to put together to save the world. Because when we think about creativity and marketing, we often think about it in communication. But we must forget products are things that solve problems. And in the end, marketing is about producing things that answers our human needs. And our task may be to communicate them, but it's also to produce those products that go into market that make a difference, and enabling concepts and information and insights to bring that together, I believe, will change the world for a much better place. And we're already seeing it in the medicine that we're producing. It's also, frankly, enabling us to find new planets in the world, such as the Kepler-90 system. But the most important thing, which uh, is fascinating me at the moment, is I don't know if anyone heard about this. There was an art sale at Christie's. Did you know about this? This art was made from an AI machine. Two AI logarithms produce this art. More of that later. It enables us to create music. With Alexa now, you can take a photograph of two pieces of clothing and you can say, what looks better? Does this look better or that look better? And an algorithm can say, by taking fashion algorithms and style, can suggest what looks better on you. I must say, I don't think that's very rewarding. I'd like to think there's a human side to the way one looks. But it is interesting that more and more we will be putting in that machine learning and helping people to choose what they wear, what they shop, how they shop, and how they listen to things. Um, but while there's this huge amount of optimism, I'd like also to remember that AI has no judgment. AI has no morality. AI is a logarithm. It's a formula. It's the formula that were made up of many formulas back actually to ancient Greece. So what does AI do? It learns from everything it sees. And as you know, it learns from um, uh, the, the uh, racist robots because it picked up, sadly, all the information that was available to it. So robots became, uh, that robot and bot became a racist. So how we program AI, our AI where is the morality of thinking about that? Who uses it has also become an important part of our creativity and the way we think and the bots we use for the science and for the way we work with our consumers and what we deliver. Um, so whilst AI is completely a formula, what I would like to say is it can produce art. And I'm going to share with you a film that was done by our Dutch office that produced the next Rembrandt. We took AI, we took machine learning, we took all the Rembrandts in the world, and we produced an extraordinary, yet-to-be-seen Rembrandt. Can we have some sound, please? 
four centuries after the famous Dutch artist's death. It took over two years, and it does look remarkably like the real thing. The next Rembrandt brings back to life one of the greatest masters. Only this time, Data is the painter and technology the brush. Together with experts from various fields, over 160,000 fragments from all of Rembrandt's 346 paintings were analyzed using 3D scans and digital files upscaled by a deep learning algorithm. Facial recognition software was designed to understand Rembrandt's style and generate new facial features which were assembled based on his use of geometric proportions. Finally, using a height map to mimic Rembrandt's brush strokes, the painting was brought to life through an advanced 3D printer that printed 13 layers of paint-based ink. And so, 347 years after his death, a new Rembrandt painting made from zeros and ones emerged, unveiled and exhibited in Amsterdam. Experts, the press, and the general public were invited to join the conversation about where data and technology can take us. A conversation that went global. A number of organizations took a seemingly impossible task. It looks precisely like a Rembrandt portrait. The world was buzzing with all the leading news channels and blogs reporting about the fading boundaries between technology and humanity. Almost a hundred million people joined the conversation about ING's innovation defying imagination. The next Rembrandt. What's next? It's extraordinary, isn't it, that an algorithm to produce something so beautiful, it's as if it were the next Rembrandt. But I mean, my big question is, could it ever produce the first Rembrandt? Where is the human being in that? So the next, but is it the first? So I just want to share with you some thoughts now, really on, on, on creativity when it comes to that. And the first thing I want to share with you is, we're in India, and I think the most powerful uh, sports in India, obviously, is cricket. And could AI have produced something that has this level of emotion, even with cricket? Oh, sorry, before I get to that, I just wanted to think a little bit about uh, the imagination, because I think what makes a difference to creativity is not the, f as I said, it's not the next, it's the first. It's the use of the imagination. It's what one can imagine to see. It's the inventiveness. It is not the predictability that makes something a first that catches people's imagination, that changes something forever, as I think this idea for Nike could change emotions about cricket. an extraordinary use of the imagination. Um, I just want to uh, uh, um, show you a few more things because my contention 
is that even though I, AI actually can help us, I'm going to get back to creativity and what AI can do. But it's to say that I, I guess this is the whole point about my talk is we're in a um, we, we're at the corner on the precipice of a huge opportunity about where we place messages, about how we can create medicine, about how we can create cures or anticipate and predict. But it is the human. It is the imagination of the human that makes wit, that makes a difference, that can take a brand someplace and make it grow. And here's something which is about humor, because I don't think machines quite have um, the ability to pick on something culturally and understand how funny it could be. Just imagine a machine coming up with this as an idea. <laughs> Bueno, son las seis de la tarde. Terminó el horario de guifeo. Pero vamos a cortar acá. Si estamos guifeando bien. Yo entiendo, entiendo. Guifear es importante. Pero a veces no sienten que se le va la vida guifeando. No, Leandro. ¿Cuánto más va a guifear? ¿Pero qué es guifear? Vos, perrito. Agarra esa pelota de una vez y anda a jugar con tus cachorros. ¿Tenés razón? Yo en lo personal... Tengo amigos esperándome con unas bramas bien heladas. ¡Es un genio! Porque digo, hay un momento para guifiar. Y hay otro para vivir. ¿O no? Sí, de uno. ¡Bye! Um, when we think about creativity, I always think we should think about uh, culture and leaning on the edge of culture and capturing a moment. Um, and very present this is, I want to share with you something from HSBC, uh, because it leans on culture. So creativity to stand out needs to capture a cultural moment. And I don't know if you've all been following Brexit, despite the fact I live in New York. I'm, uh, Brexit is very uh, close to my heart and I'm very distressed by it. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you follow the news with Theresa May. Anyway, this is a wonderful piece of work from HSBC that leans on uh, what it is that to have a brand which is so worldly and what it means uh, in, the, in the Brexit life. Sorry, sorry, Mark, this is clicking without, forgive me. Right, it should play. Can you play it for me? Because obviously you're not playing. We start the day with a Colombian, a Guatemalan, or a piping hot Costa Rican and the Danish to go. We drive German, German, Japanese, German, and we ride Taiwanese. We watch American movies on Korean tablets and struggle with Swedish flat packs. Our heroes hail from Chile, Argentina, Brazil, and often Belgium. We eat Chinese, Italian, and Indian, and go Dutch. Some of our best friends are Mexican, Siberian, Hungarian, and French. Hey. We live on a wonderful little lump of land in the middle of the sea. But we are not an island. We are part of something far, far bigger. I think that's very uh, appropriate, don't you? Um, so, creativity never stands still. So, even though I've contrasted the notion of the machine and the notion of creativity, I'm really now going to pull these things together. Because great works of art, creativity has never stood still. If you think about the Renaissance and the introduction of uh, 3D, if you think about Hockney, who just sold a, a, a painting for 90 uh, uh, million, he also, of course, produced great work on the iPad. The iPad wasn't the creativity. It was how he added the human touch that uh, enabled that creativity. We look at the Damien Hirst work, uh, we realize that he's using modern technology to bring to life an artistic idea. So all of us need to stop um, taking humans to one side and machines to another, thinking they're diametrically opposed, but we need to bring them together. And our belief, uh, J. Walter Thompson, is very simple that it's creativity, technology, that should say, and humanity, that is the trick in today's world. It's those three things together, understanding the human 
understanding the insights, understanding what will move people, make people laugh, bring the brand together with a creative leap, which is something that is surprising, something no one's seen before, not the last, but the first of something, and doing it with technology. Because technology allows us to live in it, inhabit it, bring brand experiences to life in a completely fresh and new way. And I'm going to end on something which is an 80-year-old campaign, but it shows that the technology that we brought to that can still make it exciting, new, and fresh. So it isn't that humans are contrasted with machines or that AI is going to be bad or good, but it's that it's a tool to make us better than we are. And we're going to go to another talk now to talk about uh, media, and it's going to say how AI can really help us. But for creativity, which was what I'm about, I'm going to suggest technology is a way to help us produce even more differentiation and more standout. So I'm going to show you one thing for KitKat, made in Brazil. And as you know, for 80 years, KitKat's been, have a break, have a KitKat. And this is a marvelous idea which can make the brand live, a living brand idea using technology, brand, and human insight. Let's play the film. Flying high up in the sky. Take off and leave it all behind Flying high Up in the sky That's where we're gonna be Open your eyes and see There's a whole world waiting For you and me handy for those delayed flights. So I'm going to leave you with one thought. Um, it is all of us need to use AI and use the rules. As we said, learn the rules like a pro so you can break them like an artist. That was uh, Pablo Picasso. So AI is here to help us. It is here as a tool. There are rules, but to be creative, to be differentiated, you have to use them, but not be bound by them. So thank you very much. It's a great privilege to be in Mumbai and, and, and to share with you our thoughts on uh, creativity. Thank you really for that talk and for joining us here this evening. I'm going to invite on stage uh, Sam Balsara, Chairman and Managing Director of Madison World, to please join us here on stage. Good evening and a very warm welcome to you too. And please present the Mara Ingram with a memento, a token of our appreciation. Thank you very much once again. That's so kind of you. Thank you very much.